Namaskar. Today I'll talk about yoga's healthy lifestyle. While vegetarianism is an important component of healthy lifestyle, there are several other practices when together we do them, they help us to attain good health and higher level of consciousness. Back in the 1900s, a famous British author, James Allen, wrote, when a man's thoughts are impure, he won't desire healthy food. But when a man changes his thoughts to make them pure, then he will desire, he won't desire any more unhealthy food, impure food. So the practices that combine with vegetarianism help to bring our mind to a subtler level of awareness, calmness, and well-being. That's what we'll talk about today, some of these practices. The first one is the full bath. Full bath is performed, some places it's too cold or too dry, but it's well known the effect of water on the body and mind. So the full bath is norm normally performed to keep us cool and fresh, because when we're trying to do meditation and the, we're, sweat, we're sweaty or hot, then it's difficult to gather our mental energies together. To adjust the body to the temperature of the water, normally we use normal tap water. In cold climates, we can use uh, lukewarm water. In, in, uh, for some people who live in cold climates, they even take cold baths, and that strengthens their in, immune system tremendously. But for normal people, uh, tap water slightly cooler than body temperature is sufficient. But to adjust the body to that uh, water, we first take the shower nozzle or the cup of water and pour it from the navel down. Then another cup from the back of the, uh, directly opposite the navel, uh, from the back down. The navel is the center of metabolic activity and uh, energy production, so it should be cooled first. Then the third cup or the nozzle shower goes from the top of the head, letting the water trickle down the spine, touching all the chakras, and then we're ready for the full bath. Some places, the, the, in, some, in some instances, it may not be always so convenient to take a full bath. So the second practice in, this, uh, in the holistic lifestyle is called half bath. Half bath is using water uh, as, as a bath, but without soap. So the method for, using, for doing the half bath is, again, we cool the navel first, Secondly, we pour the water from the knees downward. Then we wet the, uh, from the elbows down, the lower arms, wash the face, neck, and ears. And then we hold water in the mouth and we splash the open eyes 12 times. This practice of holding the water in the mouth, splashing the open eyes, induces the diver's reflex. It's a remnant of our aquatic mammalian ancestry. And what happens is that the, the body cools down the vagus nerve, which connects from the eyes to the heart, uh, helps to reduce the heartbeat. And this practice also re redistributes the blood flow from the fingers and the hands to the heart and the brain. So half bath is a very useful practice, can be done quickly, easily, something similar to the Islamic practice of washing the arms and limbs before prayers. And the other advantages of a half bath before sleep, if we you know, cool the lower ba the, the, uh, back part of the head, it helps to prevent nightmares and g gives us a deep restful sleep. The uh, water that's pumped from the deeper organs, the, 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 water, the cool water in the body helps to pump the, the warm blood from the deeper organs to the surface of the skin for cooling. And the, the surface... Uh, blood goes back into the deeper organs. So in this way, half bath cools the body, and it's recommended before sleep, meditation, and before taking meals. The third pillar of the uh, healthy lifestyle is yoga. Today, yoga is you know, known everywhere in the world, but in the classical Ashtanga yoga tradition, it was actually called asana. Asana means posture comfortably held. Now that's an important definition to remember when you're trying to imitate your teacher in that you know, difficult contortion that's supposed to help you to lose weight. Actually, the, the asana should bring composure to the mind and well-being to the body. So 
in order for us to do the asanas well, we should, uh, it, what helps us to do the asanas is our diet. The vegetarian diet, which re, uh, represents respect for all life, combines beautifully with the gentle poses of yoga. And those poses, they bring with, with them subtle awareness, clarity of mind, interverse of nature, calm energy. And these are all useful um, qualities for higher mental pursuits. The, probably the greatest benefit of asanas is, lies in their secretion of hormones from the endocrine glands. Scientists, more and more research is coming to prove that the endocrine glands are responsible for maintaining the body's homeostasis or its ability to regulate itself against disease. So the seven primary endocrine glands, the, the pineal, pituitary, thymus, thyroid, adrenals, pancreas, ovaries, and gonads, they secrete various hormones. The one that's most common that we know is adrenaline from the adrenal glands. When you're walking in a dark, lonely place, your, your adrenaline starts to pump because you're not familiar with the place, and so your breathing becomes uh, you know, very, uh, you become very attentive, your breathing slows down a lot, your heart, uh, the blood pumps from your, from your stomach to your heart, and uh, your hands tremble, your sense of hearing becomes very acute. So these are a very obvious example of secretion of hormone from the adre adrenal glands. But so many of our glands, nowadays we are finding out more and more of these secretion of hormones from the glands. So yoga practice, ancient asana practice, the third limb of Ashtanga yoga, the classical yoga tradition, was asana. And the effect of the asanas on the glands was well known. So that by holding the position in a certain, for a certain length of time, with a specific uh, position that gently massages that gland and produces the requisite hormone to keep that balance, that energy, and that emotion in balance. That's why another name for asana is inner sizes, because their effect is as much mental as it is physical. The fourth practice is meditation. Though asanas and yoga is more, their effect is more uh, physio-psychic, the effect of meditation is more psycho-spiritual. Now, spiritual doesn't mean ghosts and spirits. A simple word, way to explain spiritual is higher mental. So when we navigate the web or we um, you know, design a car engine, solve a math problem, you can say these are using our mind for physical activities. But we can also use the mind for subtler pursuits. And one of those subtler pursuits is meditation. So meditation brings its daily practice, helps to develop spiritual qualities. Love, compassion, peace, joy, humility, benevolence, selflessness. So some techniques of yoga to help, uh, techniques of meditation to attain that state, they use a mantra, focusing the mind on a certain word which has a very pure meaning, like universal love, universal peace. So the daily practice of meditation on that, on that word slowly and gradually transforms our thoughts and our nature slowly and gradually becomes parallel to the thoughts that we, we keep, that one thought we keep in our meditation practice. It reminds me of a story of an Indian chief, a native Indian chief was speaking to his grandson, and he said that, you know, son, there's two wolves that live inside of us, and there's a battle constantly between them. The good wolf is kindness, love, peace, humility, benevolence, service, selflessness. And the bad wolf is anger, greed, jealousy, doubt, fear, hatred, shame, ego, vanity, etc. So the grandson, he thought about his grandfather's story, and he said, which one wins? And the grandfather said, the one you feed. So here, by constantly feeding, just as we feed our body with healthy food, vegetarian food, makes our, our cells, our body cells more sentient, more pure, feeding our mind with healthy ideas through the daily practice of meditation will slowly and gradually transform us into a, bring us to a higher level of consciousness. Although there's not been a lot of research on meditation and yoga, it's been around for thousands of years, but 
slowly there has been uh, more studies being done about the effects of meditation and yoga on the body and mind. One such study at the University of Wisconsin had shown that Tibetan Buddhist meditators, the senior monks of, from that tradition, they emitted gamma ray uh, waves, which indicated a high level of neuronal activity, connecting far-flung circuits of the brain. So uh, scientists concluded that gamma waves underlie some higher level of consciousness in the, those individuals. The study by uh, Kim Innes of the University of Virginia Health Systems on the effects of yoga, she found 70 small but solid proof of the benefits of yoga on metabolic uh, syndrome, which affects about 50 million Americans. The fifth of the pillars of uh, healthy lifestyle is a universal code of ethics. The uh, Ashtanga Yoga system, uh, the eight limbs of yoga, first and second limb were these uh, universal code of ethics because the yogis thought that developing the higher mind or higher mental faculties, if it's not having a base, if we don't have a base, we may mis misutilize those mental faculties that we gain through the practice of meditation. So if we want to achieve that state of oneness, of yoga, that mystical state, then there has to be coherence in our thoughts, our words, and our actions. That's provided by the ten universal principles of life. And the sixth and the final uh, pillar of this holistic lifestyle is known as fasting. We'll talk about fasting in another video, but there's nothing more powerful, more effective to control our addiction for food, help us lose weight, inspire us for higher levels of consciousness than a regular system of fasting. So to recap, the six practices combined with vegetarianism that help us to develop our higher level of consciousness and good health include bath, half bath, yoga asanas, meditation, universal moral principles, and a regular system of fasting. Thank you very much. Namaskar.